certified in canine fitness and rehab as an instructor. In that. So I will be using all of my students' dogs. Okay. If you guys want to, when I have projects, so we'll be doing like I'll video and photograph your dog, and then we make up a, a conditioning plan, and I give you a workout plan. I like that. So like her feet are herding dogs tend to be out a little bit. Hers are really far out. Her front feet. Exaggerated, right? If you think of straight as like that, mm -hmm. or like this, hers are like that. So do that to yourself. Put your legs out like that and turn them out and feel. No, put them closer together and feel that. Now make them straight mm -hmm. and feel where that changes the stress on your body. Like what if you're putting weight on them, right? Okay. It puts it in your, the base of your neck. Mm -hmm. So she probably just needs a lot of core work and some biceps and triceps. And she, is she roachy on the back? Her back arch up? No idea what that means. No. Like if I think you slide so. your hand on her back, is that flat or does it go up? No, it's flat. It is. Okay. That's good. Okay. Uh, well, tell, me, tell, me the, tell me about the. Tell me about. Wow. Tell me about the blanket and the training for the. So all the steps you're doing here, because I know about blanket when she's. Well, she stopped eating. She stopped eating. Yes. So I can't really help her. I can only do the blanket now, so it's um. It's all just like I told you about your house, like earning access to freedom in the house. Don't give them freedom right yeah. away. They have to earn it and calm down so that they can watch the life. So does she want to be able to look out into the room so she can earn the sheet being off by being quiet? And if she makes noise, then she can get covered. And maybe it's just easier for her to be covered. It's less stressful. Um, she just kind of screams when she's ready to scream right now, but she'll learn. So does she want to see out? And then you wait till she's quiet and then cover her. And if she barks, you cover her. It's like you turn the lights off or you turn them off. But you don't talk to her about it. She controls what she can see by barking or not. And it takes a lot of repetitions for her to go, oh, when I'm quiet, I get to see. But every time I bark, they come back and cover me back up. And then I was starting to help her by also hitting the remote when uh -huh. she was quiet to build duration. Right? And that was a really good opportunity. Is she covered right now? Yes. That was a good opportunity to go uncover her because mm -hmm. she was quiet. Um, but you don't want to go back and say good girl or anything like that. You just give her information like you can see or you can't see. It's your choice. You make it happen. Right? And then I was, I was patting it with food. But then she stopped eating. Because she's really stressy in there. Like she's distressed. She's not just being like barky, like she's howling and, uh, you know, she sounds stressy, panicky. I don't know why she's in a crate all day and she's fine most of the day, all day. She's fine. Are you there? But she can see you, right? Well, she, sometimes, sometimes she cries and put, I put the blanket over her. Or if I walk out of the room, I'm in the kitchen and she's still in the office. Well, she's just not good at it here. Maybe next week we'll try her in here and see if being able to see is better. Mm. I just can't have no, like constant noise like this in no, here. No, yeah, I get it. But we'll see, because maybe this will be easier than being in there. Yeah. But, I mean, you just have to, you don't go, oh, it's this, it's terrible, I can't deal with it. You just go, no, okay, I'm not, well, I can deal with I it. I know, so just like, you just plug away at it. It's just, it's just noise. Because like, make. I have students who can't come train out at Shamrock, and they want to. Because Why? their dogs bark on stuff in the crate, and we can't have it. They can't bark out there. They can oh. bark a little bit on the course, but when they're not working, and I, only, I mean a little bit, they can't bark in the crates at all, or they'll mm -hmm. come over and ask us to leave. So I think it, so. It's like, yeah, I know you want to do more advanced level training. We got to work on this thing, um, and those are people that are like already done with all the beginner stuff, right? It's like, well, I told you day one, build quiet in the crate. You got to have it. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a fan of Gary Wilkes, so. Of who? Gary Wilkes, so. Who's that? He's a trainer. He does a lot. He's, he's online a lot. I, I always write in my little shit to him and stuff because he was a dog catcher years ago, but. I never heard of him. Yeah. Why? What does he say? Well, he believes in bonking him once in a while. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said you can't use positive training to stop a negative behavior a lot of times. You know? That's not true. Like, well, okay, he's, he's using an example like if they went through the glass sliding door, if they, if they went through the door and break it, how do you, how do you out-train that? Do you, he said you create them the rest of their life and not let them access to the closed door, or what do you do? You know? Um, we can all make up really exaggerated examples of why things won't work. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not a dog trainer. I am, and I've been a dog trainer a long time, and I specialize.
specializes in injection, and it was the go-to trainer for the vicious and dangerous dog courts with ACC. And I worked at an animal shelter for 10 years. Sure, we can hit, we can hit a dog. It hurts you more than it hurts you. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but, no, when you hit a dog, 